Hey up everyone! So, continuing the Cannes 2024 coverage, I'm now back in my room in London. Today's movie I'm going to be discussing on the channel is one that I know that a lot of you guys have been keen to hear my thoughts on. I've certainly been looking forward to discussing this film. It's this year's Palme d'Or winner, Anora, from writer-director Sean Baker. Some fun trivia for you guys. This is the fifth consecutive year where Neon has managed to win the Palme d'Or. So we had Parasite, um, Titan, Triangle of Sadness, Anatomy of a Fall, and now Anora. Anora also marks the first American film to win the Palm since Terrence Malick won for The Tree of Life back in 2011, which brings America's tally of winning the Palm d'Or to 14. And on a more personal note, the last three years that I've been to Cannes, my personal favorite movie ended up winning the Palm d'Or, which is crazy. And it's always fun for me to discuss the films on the channel which I personally had the most passion for, and Anora is certainly that bitch. <laughs> Before we dive in, just let you guys know I have a lot more early can reviews coming up on the channel as well as lots of Oscar prediction videos as well so if you're into that sort of thing and would like to help me reach my end of your goal of reaching 10,000 subscribers please do hit that little subscribe button for me if you haven't done so already it really does help and it means a lot to me as I'm filming this video right now there have only been two stills released for this film um, there's no teaser trailer no actual trailer there was like one clip from the film that was circulating at the festival so I don't have a lot of footage to punctuate my points in this review so you're just gonna have to take my word on how great Anora is and try Trust me, I am going to be such a cheerleader for this film when it comes award season, but more on its Oscars chances later. Sean Baker is a filmmaker who likes to tell stories about the misunderstood and the marginalized communities in America. Okay, he's very much championing and celebrating them in his movies. And Anora is no different. This is a hilarious and at times heartbreaking rags to riches comedy about a young sex worker called Anora, although she likes to go by the nickname Annie in this film, and she's played by Mikey Madison. She's an erotic dancer who lives in New York City. She works at a gentleman's club as a stripper and sometimes does sex work outside of the club. She has a little bit of Russian heritage. Her grandmother only spoke Russian as Annie was growing up, so she can speak a little Russian. And because of that, her boss at the club gives her a high rolling client, this 21 year old Russian lad called Ivan Zakharov, who's played by Mark Eldenstein. Hopefully I pronounced that name correct. And Ivan is the son of a Russian billionaire. And the two of them, Annie and Ivan, have this instantaneous connection. The chemistry between them is just explosive. It's a mutual attraction. It's very passionate, very intense. And Ivan makes Annie an offer to be his exclusive girlfriend for a week. She accepts his offer, and the two of them have this absolutely freewheeling whirlwind of a week in Vegas, where the two of them fall head over heels in love for each other. I'm talking crazy love, okay? And you believe it. This is seven days of wild, carefree, youthful bliss before Ivan has to go back to Russia to start learning the ropes of his father's business. But Ivan, not wanting to leave America or say goodbye to his childhood yet, in an act of rebellion and impulsive hormonal romance, proposes to Annie and they get married in Vegas. And for a fleeting moment, it feels like a dream come true for both Ivan and Annie, but especially for Annie. It's a Cinderella story for her, but this is real life. And in real life, there are no happily ever afters, only the day after. And this is where the film flies off the rails in the most hysterical way. Yvonne's handlers come knocking at his door once they hear the rumors that he's married a prostitute with no prenup. Yvonne panics and bolts out the door and the rest of the film sees Anora being forced by these three men Tauros, Igor, and Granig uh, to help them find Yvonne so they can get the marriage annulled ASAP. And that is all the plot you need to know. Sean Baker is a filmmaker who's been on my radar for quite some time now, and he's certainly garnered a reputation as one of America's most promising indie filmmakers. I've loved all of his movies. In fact, I don't think he's ever scored lower than eight out of 10 on my channel, but what I've loved even more is watching his growth and evolution as a filmmaker. You can see it in my reviews of his previous films that he's only gotten stronger and stronger with each subsequent film, and my scores for his films have only gotten higher and higher. You can probably see where I'm going with this for the score for this film. But yeah, all of Sean Baker's previous films are very entertaining, full of electric characters, and have plenty of heart, but you can see in those previous films that he was still mastering his craft and his style. He still had some rough edges that needed sanding off for those films, but with Anora, you very much feel how confident he is now as a director. There are a lot of wild antics in this film, a lot of chaos, but Sean Baker came in and knew exactly what type of film he wanted to make, what the message of this film was, okay? He very much was in control. And the result is you have this incredibly entertaining movie which has a lot to say about 
class disparity, capitalism, and the American dream. And now that he's gone and won the Palme d'Or, this very much feels like a ceremonial arrival for Sean Baker. And he's no longer gonna be that little indie filmmaker to look out for. And now he's playing in the big leagues. And even more people are gonna be watching his career intently after they've seen Enora. Because this movie slaps so hard. It's got everything you could want from a film. Dimensional characters, Tension, swooning romance, a road trip vibe, screwball comedy, familial drama, inspired needle drops, whiplash editing, exquisite cinematography, real world commentary, and above all, it's just a really, really, really fun watch. That's the thing with Sean Baker's movies. He makes these prestigious pictures which always go to can, and yet they never feel pretentious or highbrow or difficult to get on board with. Now his films have a breezy, humorous, carefree way about them. I would say all of his films are crowd-pleasing, but Honora is undoubtedly his most crowd-pleasing film to date. It's got the heartwarming feels of The Florida Project, but also the wily pacing and shock value of Red Rocket. Again, it really does feel like Sean Baker has found his sweet spot with this film. But what this film is certain to do is launch the careers of its two young stars, Mikey Madison and Mark Eldenstein. A lot of people have dubbed Eldenstein the Russian Timothy Chalamet, and I can see why he does have similar hair and that Chalamet bone structure, but also he does sort of bring a certain Timmy Tim energy to the screen. He's like an excitable puppy as Yvonne. He has a very magnetic persona and you can see why Annie is drawn to him. And it's not just because of his money, okay? He's charismatic and funny, the life of the party. Sure, he has a major case of Peter Pan syndrome because all he wants to do is play video games, party and fuck, but this is such a captivating debut performance from Eldenstein. Like he brings so much spontaneity and improvisation to the role, which makes his performance very electrifying to watch. And you'll walk away from this film going, where has this kid been hiding all along? Okay, this is an exciting new star who I wanna see more work from in the future. There's a scene where Annie comes to his house and he's just sliding around in his socks and it almost feels like an homage to like the early days of Tom Cruise when he was sliding around in his socks and underwear and risky business. So yeah, who knows? Maybe we've got a young Tom Cruise or a slightly younger Timothy Chalamet on our hands. But regardless of how great Mark Eldenstein is in this movie, this film still belongs to Mikey Madison who plays the titular Anora. I've only seen her in Scream 2022 and Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. So it's not like she's a brand newcomer to the scene, but this movie is going to make her and Eldenstein, you know, A-list famous. This is a career-defining role for Mikey Madison, and she's only 25 years old, but to have a role like this already under her belt, this is going to launch her into much bigger projects. We rarely see characters who are sex workers in movies given this much depth, and part of that is credit to Sean Baker's writing, but Mikey Madison delivers a fully realized and fully rounded performance as Honora. She's sweet, but also feisty. She nails the Coney Island accent, but also when the shit hits the fan in the second half of this film, Madison navigates the tonal jumps with an adept ease. Whilst we're often laughing at the situational comedy, we're also feeling her fear and her vulnerability in this moment, okay? It's a very nuanced performance where she's juggling so many different emotions all at once. Also, the final scene of this movie was the moment where I was like, okay, Oscar nominee. You ain't gonna be forgetting Anora anytime soon, or Mackie Madison for that matter. Also, I need to give a shout out to the supporting players in this film, Yuri Borisov, who plays the mild-mannered Igor, Vash Tumazian, who plays the incompetent Garnik, and Karen Karagulian, who plays the disgruntled Toras, who is a regular player in Sean Baker's previous films. This is his biggest role in any of the movies, and he absolutely crushes it. The three of them play this trio of Russian and Armenian goons who've been hired by Yvonne's parents to find Yvonne. And I was surprised by how much weight they all brought to these roles. You really do get a sense of who they are as people. Okay, they're not just muscle for hire. They all feel really fleshed out, which is again, credit to Sean Baker's fantastic writing, but these actors do a brilliant job of breathing life into these characters, which would often feel like two-dimensional in other movies. As for negatives, I don't really have much, but I will say there is a considerable shift in pacing in the second half. Like, the first half of this film is so fast, okay? It's like Sean Baker was doing cocaine in the editing booth because it is so frantically quick, but it needs to be quick because that sort of represents the whirlwind rush of the romance between Annie and Yvonne, okay? It, it needed to be fast, it makes sense, and it actually makes even more sense that the film would slow down in the second half because that's when we come back down to reality, okay? That's when we're coming down off the high, when reality sets back in. And while some people will say, oh yeah, the second act did slow down a bit too much for my liking, it felt a little bit baggy, I didn't mind because even though it did feel a little long, it was still very chaotic, very funny, very entertaining. So I was engaged for it all. So yeah, when the film is this 
captivating. I don't mind that it feels a little bit too long. Shall we talk about its Oscars chances? Well, now that it's won the Palm d'Or, we really do need to take it seriously as an Oscars contender. Four out of the five past Palm d'Or winners, which were all distributed by Neon, have gone on to get a Best Picture nomination at the Oscars, okay? So it's a fairly reliable modern stat to go off of that this film is gonna track well with the Academy. I am feeling very confident that Anora is gonna get the Best Picture nomination. In fact, I do think it could be even a contender to win. I can understand why others aren't as confident on Honora being a Best Picture contender because it is a screwball comedy, it's very blue, there's lots of nudity in it and whatnot, and the Academy doesn't really go for those types of movies. I've heard some people comparing this movie to Uncut Gems as well, and as we all know, Uncut Gems was completely goose-egged at the Oscars, but I don't think that's gonna happen to Honora. I think Honora is a much more palatable movie than Uncut Gems ever was. Both critics and general audience members love this film at Cannes, okay? Now that it's won the top prize as well, it's already got built-in hype and prestige surrounding it, okay? Lots of people are gonna wanna check out this movie, and I do think the Academy will want to champion a movie like this, especially given that it's an American Palm d'Or winner as well, okay? Why wouldn't they want to keep the celebration going for an American movie? And again, this is a neon film, okay? They have a proven track record of knowing how to launch a successful awards campaign for their movies. And if they play their cards right, they could end up getting Honora a substantial nominations bundle. Sean Baker is probably gonna receive his first long overdue Oscar nominations for both writing and directing. He's been on the rise for many years, he's received a lot of acclaim, okay, now really does feel like his time. But if Honora's getting the Best Picture nomination, then Mikey Madison has to come along for Best Actress. It's her movie, but also Mark Eldenstein could come along for an acting nomination as well, whether he goes lead or supporting remains to be seen. I think he'll probably have a better chance in supporting. But he doesn't seem as likely to me as Mikey Madison does. For one, it is her movie, but also there is a bit of gender bias in the Academy when it comes to young performance. Performances. Often they will champion, you know, the young ingenue performances like Madison's, but when it comes to the male performances, um, it's a bit harder for younger male performers to crack in with like a debut performance. I'm not saying that it's not going to happen for Eldenstein, like he could totally come along as part of the nominations bundle for Honora. Uh, and it would be a very worthy nomination as well. All I'm saying is I feel more confident about Mikey Madison getting her first nom than him getting his. But I'd love to see it happen. In fact, I'd love to see nominations for the other players in this movie, like Yuri Borisov or Karen Karagulian. But who knows, we'll have to wait and see what Neon's campaign strategy is for the male performances in this film. Also, if the Academy really likes this film, I could see it getting nominations for cinematography and editing. They are two departments which are very flashy and stylish and uh, will stay in people's minds after they've seen this movie. Drew Daniels in particular deserves a nomination for his gorgeous cinematography. What do you guys think? How many Oscar nominations is Honora going to get? In what categories? We have to say, let me know in that comment section down below. All right, let's ask them three questions. Firstly, would I watch this again? Uh, Adoy. Like, I love this movie, okay? I can't wait to get a copy of it and add it to my collection, but I'm also excited to watch it multiple times throughout this year alone, like, again at the cinema with friends, with crowds, with Glenn, like, yeah, I, I, I can't wait to watch this movie again. Question two, do I recommend it for you guys? Oh my god, that is such an easy yes. If you're familiar with Sean Baker's previous films, then yes, you're going to love Honora. But for those of you that are unfamiliar with his work, then I highly encourage you to go watch Honora in a cinema. Like, this is such a whirlwind of a movie. It's original, it's hilarious, it has an audacious soundtrack which includes Slater, Tattoo, and Take That. Yeah, the performances are phenomenal. So yes, I highly recommend this film. And third question, what score to give it out of 10? Sean Baker's Anora isn't just his best film to date. It is the best film to come out of the 2024 Cannes Film Festival and is easily gonna be in my top 10 favorite films of 2024. Apart from losing a little bit of steam in the second half and feeling a little overdrawn, I adored this film. I adore Anora. so I'm gonna give Anora a score of 10 out of 10 and I do think this is a movie everyone should watch at least once before they die. It is a total blast, this film, but as always, guys, it is just one bloke's opinion, I would love to hear from you. Are you excited for Anora? Have you seen it? If you have, what do you make of this film? Whatever you have to say about this movie, do let me know in that comment section down below. If you guys have enjoyed this video, do help me out with a little thumbs up button. If you want more movie TV and Oscars related content, don't forget to click subscribe. And as always, thank you guys so much for watching. For more things related to movies, TV, the Oscars, and popcorn culture, I'm Luke Harefield, and I'll see you next time.